I wouldn't be correct if I said that vegans didn't know a lot about meat. But what you boys do in your free time is up to you. We are talking about beef here. Mike the Vegan recently made a video speaking negatively about grass-fed beef. First off, it's ridiculous to say that animals grazing on grasslands in nature is bad for the environment. Are vegans going to start saying that we need to start shooting deer because they're shitting in the woods? Vegans love blowing this out of proportion. But reality is that 3% of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States are from livestock. I've also never heard a vegan speak about food waste, but one third of food is thrown out globally. But hey, food waste isn't specific to animal products and the vegan agenda, so they don't care. What vegans also don't care about is that grasslands and ruminant grazing animals actually co-evolved together. Since we're saying that carbon is bad for the environment from grass-fed cattle, let's take a look at the carbon cycle in this setting. Grass requires carbon to grow. So by grazing the grass, the cows are essentially recycling their own emissions. Plants take carbon from the atmosphere and pump it back into the soil. The manure the cows excrete also has carbon that is put back into the soil. That cow pie is a massive amount of energy being put back into the earth. The methane the cows burp is also recycled in this way. Ray Arculeta talks about this in this clip. Cows are powerful. Look, his ranch on the left, his ranch used to be like that on the right, bringing the cattle and that has changed. But what they do start first, they start off with a good patch that looks like in the left, and then they bring the animals and move them like this, like giant buffalo, and they use cowboys. And then the animals distribute the manure very closely. I want manure every square foot. The hoofs break up the crust, and then the cows do the most powerful thing they do. <laughs> they put it on the land. A lot of energy goes right there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a cow pie in the desert. Where the cow put that energy, look what happens. And I get so frustrated to hear the argument, well, we got to eat less meat. No, we need more meat, but we need it to be raised like buffalo, not in the industrial complex that we have. Why aren't vegans accounting for the carbon in the soil? Because they have no understanding of agriculture or natural ecosystems. And they would probably start choking down some grass-fed beef. Here, we see that without soil sea flux, carbon storage, grass-fed grazing is actually worse than grain-fed. But with soil carbon considered, it is actually negative, having a positive impact on the environment, while grain-fed remains the same. These grass-fed cattle are made to live in a way that bison used to roam the plains through a farming method called AMP grazing. Adaptive multi-paddock grazing, popularized by Alan Savory, an environmentalist. Let's see what he has to say. There is only one option. I repeat to you, only one option left to climatologists and scientists, and that is to do the unthinkable and to use livestock, bunched and moving, as a proxy for former herds and predators and mimic nature. There is no other alternative left to mankind. So let's do that. So on this bit of grassland, we'll do it, but just in the foreground. We'll impact it very heavily with cattle to mimic nature, and we've done so, and look at that. All of that grass is now covering the soil as dung, urine, and litter, or mulch, as every one of the gardeners amongst you would understand, and that soil is ready to hold, absorb and hold the rain, to store carbon, and to break down methane. 
And we did that without using fire to damage the soil, and the plants are free to grow. And for anyone saying that it's not possible to feed the world on this method, there is a farmer, Joel Salatin, literally doing this. So what about intervening in land? You know, is there stuff that we could do? I find it fascinating that, um, that America has 36 million acres of lawn <laughs> and 36 million acres housing and feeding recreational horses. That's 72 million acres. Folks, that's enough to feed our entire country without a single farm. So I'll close with this. On our farm, the cow days production, what you can produce on an acre in our county on average is 80 cow days per acre, okay? In other words, one acre will support 80 cows for one day a year or one cow for 80 days a year. A cow day is what? One cow will eat in a day. You know, today, whatever you eat is, is a person day of food for you. Are you with me? Okay, so in our county, it's 80. On our farm, for literally 15 years now, we have averaged well over, you ready for the number? 400 cow days per acre. And we have not planted a seed, and we have not bought a bag of chemical fertilizer in over 50 years. That means they can feed 400 cows per acre of land per day. This is specifically because when cows are allowed to constantly graze wherever they want, the grass is never able to recover and grow rapidly. If the grass is given time to recover from grazing, its growth rate rapidly increases over tenfold. All through photosynthesis from the sun, if you think about it, these animals roaming the plains wouldn't have gone back to that spot for possibly quite a while. So why hasn't this been implemented? Because too many people are already invested from growing corn to soy, lobbies. The vegans are targeting the wrong people here. But if vegans started targeting the corn and soy lobbies, they wouldn't have much food to eat. Vegans are damaging the environment more than people supporting local farmers. No questions asked. Teddy Roosevelt said, it's really hard to get someone to believe something that his paycheck says he shouldn't believe. Vegans can't just start suddenly eating grass-fed beef. It goes against everything they believe in. Not only are they clueless on the environment, they have stuck to the modern cultural idea that meat is unhealthy. This has been beaten to death. But now, since vegans can fly in hundreds of foods from all over the world and inject themselves with dozens of supplements, they don't have to eat meat. It's, it's literally crazy when you say that meat is bad for you, when you have to make a supplement in a laboratory to get something that's only contained in animal foods. Grass-fed meat has a significantly better nutrient profile than grain-fed meat. All the vitamins can be anywhere from 5 to 10 times higher. This includes omega-3 fatty acids. I did a whole video explaining this, so I won't go into it here. I'll link that at the end. But Mike the Vegan also brought up that chia seeds are higher in omega-3 precursor alpha-linolenic acid than grass-fed beef. But the problem here is that omega-6 fatty acids, which are high in a vegan diet, inhibit the absorption and conversion of these omega-3 fatty acids. This is because of the 6-desaturase enzyme. This enzyme is required for starting the conversion of linoleic as well as alpha-linolenic acid into DHA. The issue here is they compete with each other in the initial conversion as well as the end conversion of DPA into DHA. Seeing as plant foods cannot raise blood levels of DHA, the conversion is completely inhibited by these high omega-6 levels. At no point throughout our history in nature did we ever have high levels of omega-6 in our diets. This can explain why this happens fairly well. Grass-fed meat products contain these precursors to DHA as well, but since the omega-6 content isn't high, the function of the enzyme isn't inhibited. There was also a study shown on chia seeds indicating that blood levels of linoleic acid and EPA can be altered, but there is no reduction in inflammation.
What this means is that a vegan's blood work can look good on paper, yet they still resemble a lifeless skeleton. But hey guys, look at this piece of paper. My doctor said I'm so healthy. You guys have to trust the vegan diet. Oh my god, guys, I feel so good. If you guys want to learn more about this, check out the videos I'm going to link at the end here as well as all of these talks I mentioned with those other people. I will link those down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button and share the video. If you would like to support me, just check out some of the videos at the end here. There's also my Patreon, my Amazon shop, a bunch of things down in the comments below. I recently launched Frankie's Free Range Meat. My goal is to bring you high quality, nutrient dense, as well as unique animal products worldwide. If you guys want to learn more about that or order high quality animal foods, check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com. You guys enjoy the weekend.